Welcome to yoga. So last week we did some forward bends, kind of focusing attention inward. And this week we're going to do some back bends, some heart openers. So let's get started. You can start uh, seated or supine and we're gonna do a little bit of a different um, different centering today we're gonna start by focusing on our breath so once you get settled um, in the position of your choice and close your eyes just start by bringing your awareness to your breath, just your natural breath. Uh, we're not trying to control it or change it in any way. But just notice, be curious about how your breath is, is moving in your body this morning, right here on your mat. Notice um, the quality. So follow it uh, um, from the beginning of your inhale all the way through to the end of your exhale and just let your body breathe itself notice the qualities of your breath so notice if the breath feels um, if your inhale is longer than your exhale or vice versa notice if there's a natural pause between the inhale and exhale um, or both one or both um, if your breath seems deep, where, where it moves in your body, how it, your body moves with your breath, just, just notice. And the most important thing about this is no judgment. So your body breathes itself. It knows how to respond to the needs of your activity. Um, so it's, it's kind of a mirror in some ways of what's going on in your body physically and emotionally. And the other side of the, the breath is that um, it's, it can also be a tool. So that's what we learn with pranayama, a tool to um, calm you down, so right now you're looking, just seeing how your, what your, where your breath is today. You can also reflect emotions and states of mind that are going on in your body. So if you're agitated, your breath tends to be more shallow and faster. So the, the idea of non-judgment and compassion is going to be reiterated through our practice today as heart openers um, help to access your ability for compassion, open-heartedness, and it starts with yourself. So non-judging, just noticing, being aware without judgment. Now begin to deepen, lengthen, even out your breath. So just with no particular named pranayama, just become, take a little bit of control of your breath. You can count if that helps you, but just have an awareness of breathing deep into your belly so your belly rises slowly gently and then as you inhale your rib cage expands all the way up to your collarbones and then as you exhale everything contracts moves gently towards center and another um, pranayama practice ujjayi breath can help you to have you have a little more awareness and control of the of the breath so that's just the narrow narrowing of your glottis to make a 
soft sound of the breath in and out through your nose. So just gradually, gently, not with, not over efforting, just begin to deepen, lengthen, and even out your breath. And as you do it, you can relax, just check in to see where in your body you have, might have some tension. It's always good to start at your face, relax around your eyes, relax, let your teeth come a bit apart, jaw relaxed, release your throat, and then just kind of moving down through your body as you continue the slow, deep, even breath. Just kind of move down through your body, feeling the body move on the inhale, and then relax, let go on the exhale. So releasing tension with your breath. judgment toward whatever you find, listening to your body and adjusting your practice so that you have compassion for parts that need a little compassion, not ever moving into pain and modifying poses so that it feels good for your body. That's how you get the most out of your yoga practice. based on what you've seen and maybe thinking about why you, what brought you to yoga practice today, uh, create an intention for just this practice and seal that into your mind. Now the intention actually, I said just for this practice, but it could be an intention that you've set something you, you want to find off the map and carry into this practice and maybe out beyond. So some positive outcome change that you'd like to see happen. And we're gonna begin practice today um, on hands and knees, all fours. So bring yourself up to that position, tabletop. And set up so that your shoulders are over your wrists and your hip knees are under your hips. Spread your fingers, creating a nice broad base. Press down into the ball mounts of your fingers. Take a little pressure off your wrists. Press down into the tops of your feet, any part of your legs that are touching the mat. And we'll begin with just some gentle cat cows. So on an inhale, let your chest move down, your tailbone move up. Exhale, tuck your tailbone, press into your hands and your legs, round your back, chin toward your chest, cat pose. Very gently moving, maybe getting the movements a little deeper as you progress. Moving with your breath, so really slow, mindful movement, like a moving meditation. As you inhale, drag energetically your hands toward your knees, so nothing's moving, but you're just creating some traction there. Chest focus, we're gonna be doing back bends today, as I said, gentle back bends. 
So think about on the inhale as you come into cat, imagine the curve in your spine, especially the thoracic spine, just moving down and forward. Couple more rounds. Flexing and extending the spine gently, waking it up. And then the next time you come into cat pose, let your hips come on back over your heels. Find a child's pose that's comfortable for you. Support your head, something behind your hips if that feels good. So just Relax into child's pose for a few breaths. Letting everything sink down. And then on an inhale, come back up to all fours. Walk your hands a little bit forward, maybe a hand length forward. And we're gonna go do a little um, vinyasa here, movement. So start, exhale, bring your hips back into child's pose again. Inhale up to all fours. And then exhale, let your, you might want to walk your hands out a little bit more, let your leg, hips come forward and chest up. So elbows, I mean, uh, shoulders over wrists. So you're in a little back bend here. Now to protect your low back, squeeze your glutes and tuck your belt, tuck your tailbone a little bit. So strengthen your core. So you, the back bend is in your upper back. Then exhale back towards child's pose. Puppy, it's really more of a puppy. Inhale up, let your hips come forward and lift your chest. Just like that, a few more just like that. Exhale brings you back toward puppy. Inhale up, hips forward. Contract your glute muscles, bring your belly in. So the, the spinal extension is more in the thoracic spine, protect your low back. Couple more. Really open your chest when you come forward. Shine out through your chest like there's a headlight there. And then come back to all fours. Bring your hands back under your shoulders. And we're gonna come up onto our knees. So right on your knees, tops of your feet. Take your hands, palms against your sacrum, thumbs facing out, and draw your shoulder blades together. So strong opening of your chest here, shoulder blades drawing together on the back, and lift, lift your chest, press your palms against your sacrum, now you don't want your hips to jut forward again so that the creating too much extension in the low back. So try to keep your hips right over your um, knees and the, feel the extension mostly in your upper spine, upper back, between your shoulder blades, your thoracic spine. Keep bringing your elbows together. You can lift your chin a little bit, but not too much. This is a form of camel pose. And just hold for a minute and breathe.
One more slow, deep, even breath. And then let your hands um, come behind your back. Fingers entwine. Come forward onto the crown of your head. Whoops. Okay, that was wrong. <laughs> it's too, first put your hands down on the mat, then bring your head to the mat. Close to your knees as you can. Then you can bring your hands back behind you. If this feels good and raise your hands up or if that doesn't feel good you can just cross um, hold the opposite elbows this is a mudra and another thing you can do here is just rock very gently on the crown of your head maybe some slow easy circles and this can feel really weird because you don't usually put your head against the mat. So I know when I do it, sometimes there are areas that feel like, you know, they need some massaging. So that's what we're doing is massaging. So just gently, a little bit rocking. And then come back up to all fours. Walk your hands ahead a little bit. Bring your shoulders over your wrists. Firm up your core, bring your navel in and up, and keeping your elbows by, by your side, slowly lower down, chin, chest, and come onto your belly. The hips are the last thing to go down. Come onto your forearms, elbows under your shoulders, fingers spread, or you can clasp your hands in front. Press down into your feet, firm your, squeeze your glutes, and dr energetically draw your elbows back on the mat. They won't move, just energetically pull back and let your chest come up through your hands. Sphinx pose. This is a back bend, gentle back bend. Your gaze is down about a, some place in front of the mat. So keep your, protect your, your cervical spine. Just have your gaze be down, chest moving forward, gently pulling back on your elbows. And then stack your hands and bring your forehead to your hands, which is an even gentler back bend, crocodile, and just breathe here, resting. And then bring yourself back up to all fours and tuck your toes, come up into downward facing dog. Hips up, start with your knees bent, lift your hips up, and then you can pedal your feet a little bit. And then walk your hands and feet together and come into a standing forward bend, Uttanasana. Knees bent a little or a lot. Bring your hands to your shins and lengthen out with a flat back, half lift. Inhale here, exhale, fold back. And then inhale, press into your feet, come all the way up, palms touch, hands to the heart center, and come into mountain pose. So you know how to do it, mindfully building the pose from the base up, Spread your toes, Tadabanda, little tuck in your tailbone, lengthen through the side waist, shoulders up, around and down, so open chest, palms face a little forward, externally rotated, helps the opening, 
Spread your fingers, reach down and lift up through the crown of your head. Chin back just a tad. And then let go of extra effort. So soften a little, keeping the alignment. Close your eyes if you have the balance. Focus here on your open chest. Open hearted. Come back to your breath. Slow, deep, even breath. Relax face, jaw, neck. Two more breaths. shoulder vinyasa so keeping your fingers spread inhale arms come up exhale palms together right down to the heart space make a triangle with your thumb and index finger and inhale push away and then exhale palms open inhale up Exhale down to the center. Inhale, push out. Exhale, palms open. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Push away. Big opening. Very nice. And I'm going to do some chair poses with, uh, I think we did this last week, half, half sun with chair and an extra breath. So we'll be in chair and then we'll exhale, bring our arms behind. So um, it'll go like this. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, bend your knees, forward fold. Inhale, set your hips back, arms up to frame the ears. Exhale, arms straight back. Inhale all the way up, hands around to the heart center. A couple more times. Inhale up, exhale forward fold. Inhale chair, weight on your heels. Exhale arms back, chest open. Inhale all the way up, exhale back. One more time, you can do it yourself. Slow, deep, even breath. Okay, and now just make sure you're in the top third of your mat. I'm going to turn sideways to you. Um, feet hip width apart. Turn your right toes out and take a step back. So we're gonna come into a, a warrior one pose. So that's um, closed hips. So you want space between your feet. Take your left knee over your left ankle. Bring the right hip forward a little bit. So you want your hips squared to the short edge of your mat. Start here. We're gonna do open hearted warrior. So let's start with our hands, heart, at our heart center with inhale check to make sure your feet are not on the same line your hip, right hip is coming forward press into both feet and then bring your hands back palms facing forward so chest open open-hearted warrior lift up lift your chest Breathe right into your heart space. Slow, deep, even breaths. A few more. You can close your eyes if you have the balance. And then step your right foot forward. 
Just shake everything out a little bit before we go to the other side. This time your left toes come out about 45 degrees. Take a step back. So make sure you can adjust your stance to get the knee right over your ankle. And you want to be able to see your toes, your big toe anyway. Left foot comes forward a little bit, square to the front edge of the mat. Hands at heart space. Press into both feet. And then arms come back. So your, hand, your palms are spread, thumbs up. So externally rotate your shoulders. Warrior one, Virabhadrasan one, open-hearted virgin on the other side. See if you can take five slow, deep, even breaths here. Stable, not over-efforting. Feeling the expanse of your chest, open heart. And then come back to center. Come back to mountain pose. Just find your mountain pose, building mindfully. Just take a few breaths here before we move on to our next sequence. Reconnect with your breath. Notice energy in your body. Remember non-judgment. Listen to your body. Now turn to face the long edge of your mat and step your feet wide apart. Toes facing forward. Hands to your hips. Let's start with the arms straight out, shoulder height, and the fingers are spread. So you're pressing down through both feet, out through both hands, arms, and right up through the crown of your head. This is a form of um, trikonasana, it's, uh, but also called star pose sometimes. And bring your hands to your hips. You can have a block in front. If you, we're going to do a um, prasari to padratanasan wide leg forward bend. So start by hinging at your hip crease here. So you keep your tailbone tilted up as you come forward with a flat back. You can bring your hands to the block, hands to your thighs. So pause at the halfway point here. Reaching out through the crown of your head, back through your tailbone, so long spine. And then you can exhale further down all the way to the mat, perhaps watching your, walking your feet further apart, or if you have your hand on a block, that's fine too. Come down there and you can let your head come down too. The option here to clasp your hands behind your back and like we did in yoga mudra on our knees, bring your arms up. Just a little, another chest opener. Don't have to do it. You can hold opposite elbows. One more deep breath. Exhale. Now come up halfway, hands on the block or hands on your hips. Take and press down into your feet and press up all the way up. Bring your feet a little bit back together if you if you turn them out. Take your pivot on your right heel so your right toes go to face the short edge of the mat and pivot your left heel back a little bit and we're going to come into warrior two so this is an open hip pose shoulders are going to be squared toward the long edge of the mat not don't worry about your hips but your shoulders and then take your right knee 
over your right ankle. I'm going to shorten my stance a little bit. So we want to find the right stance. Now this time your feet are on the same line, either heel to heel or heel to instep. So you want your right knee over your right ankle, shoulders square to the long edge. Begin with your hands at your heart space and inhale. I'm sorry, inhale here with your hands at your heart space and then exhale, spread your arms, take your gaze out over the middle finger of your right hand or your two. We're gonna do a little um, movement sequence here. So the exhale will be into warrior two. Inhale, straighten your right leg, bring your arms up overhead. Exhale, back into warrior two. Inhale, back to center. With your gaze comes back, your arms up, leg straightens, okay? A few more times. Exhale, slow, deep, even breath, inhale. Now the next time you come in to an exhale to warrior two, pause in warrior two. Take a couple breaths. And then straight, come back to legs apart, feet parallel, and we'll do that sequence on the other side. So left toes come toward the short edge of your mat, right heel pivots, so about 45 degrees. Find a stance where you can get your left knee over left ankle. Your spine is coming right up in the middle, so not leaning forward, not leaning back. Bring your hands to your heart space, palms together. Inhale, exhale, arms straight out. Take a look over your left middle finger. Couple breaths, warrior two, Virabhadrasan two. And then inhale, straighten your left leg, arms up, gaze comes back to center. Exhale, back into warrior two. Move with your breath. It's a simple little vinyasa. And the next time you come to Warrior Two, pause for a few breaths. Really getting into the pose. Notice the chest open here. Lengthen up through the crown of your head. Right in the center. And then come back to center. Bring your feet together. And I'm trying to see what we have time for here. Um, I think we have time for a triangle. So uh, take your right toes out again and pivot your left heel. Come into the warrior. No, keep your keep your legs straight. Shoulders squared to the long edge of the mat. Hands at your heart center. Inhale here. Exhale, arms straight out, and inhale, keeping your arms level, reach out toward the front, toward your right, over your right foot, and when you get as far as you can go, pivot, this cartwheel around, hand up straight, left hand up straight, right hand comes to rest somewhere on your leg or a block, so you don't want to curve your spine. You want it to be straight out with your spine. So don't slump into triangle pose. You have a strong energy coming up your core, out the crown of your head. 
Your arm does not have to be up. You can bring it behind your back. You can have it on your hip. So any arm you want, but maintain the integrity of your spine so it's not curving over. It's coming straight out and your core is holding you up there. Press into both feet. Gaze can be up at your upper hand straight ahead or down at your right foot. Triangle pose, trikonasan. And then inhale, come back up, parallel your feet, and we'll try to the other side. So this time, left toes forward, right heel pivots back a little bit, square your shoulders, Arms at, um, hands at heart space, inhale, Exhale, arms out, and then next inhale, slide over toward the left and rotate down. So what we're going for here is the shoulders are stacked. Everything's in the same plane, so you're not going forward or reaching back as if you're between planks of glass, but just that's just an idea. come back to your breath. See if you can find stability. Nice strong foundation pressing into your feet. Lifting with your arm. Opening the chest. And then inhale, come all the way up. Parallel your feet. And walk your feet back close together and we'll just do a little couple half suns to bring some movement after some stillness. Inhale, come up. Exhale, forward fold. This time we'll just do a different half sun. Inhale, half lift, hands on your shins. Exhale, fold. And inhale, one more just like that. Or you can do any half sun salutation you want. And then we're going to come down onto our backs. So I'm going to do like this. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Step your feet back into downward facing dog. Inhale, your knees to the mat. Feet come out to the side. Come over onto your backside. Your buttocks and keeping this strong core. You just lower yourself down onto your backs. Oh, I'm sorry. You should have a couple blocks nearby. A couple blocks or a rolled up blanket. We're going to do um, fish pose. So if you don't have those, grab those. You, you don't absolutely need them. But if you have them, then it might be helpful. So come on to your back. Knees bent, feet on the floor near your hips, arms by your side. Spread your fingers, press into the mat with your fingers and with your feet. Inhale, bring your hips up. Bridge pose, we'll do movement first. Exhale, come down one vertebra at a time. Just moving with your breath. Inhale, lift your hips, press into your feet, press out through your energy, right out through your knees so your knees don't splay apart. You can put a block between your legs for, to help with that. Make sure your chest is rising toward your chin, not the chin toward the chest. So keep a long neck. Open chest. Option two, keep moving. Option to put a block on the flat side under your sacrum for supported bridge. 
option to hold your bridge, perhaps clasping your hands below your hips. Breathe, whatever version you're in, stay with your breath. Heart opener. And then come back to where we started, knees bent, and we're going to move into fish pose. So I'm going to give you some options here. Um, the no prop option is to have your legs straight, hands, palms down under your uh, hips under your body, right under your buttocks. Come up onto your elbows, lift your chest, and perhaps put, bring your head, top of your head to the mat behind. That's one version. You can also take um, a, the two blocks, one flat, on the flat side and one about four inches behind it on the tall version, the tall setting. And then you can have knees bent or legs straight. Put the flat, bring your the flat back right between your shoulder blades and the top of your head will rest on, on the back of your head will rest on the tall block. So you might have to do a little finagling to get the blocks in the right place. but. It's, it's very kind of restorative. So a, ch a supported chest opener, supported fish, or you could put a rolled blanket under your shoulder blades, um, side to side or lengthwise against your spine, something supporting your head too. So find some version of fish pose that, that works for you. You don't have to use blocks. Anything that can just lift and open your chest and support your head so your cervical spine isn't overextending. So find some version of fish pose. Or if that's not working for you today, some, some kind of more chest opener you could do supported bridge. There the block is under your sacrum, but the chest is open. So just for a little bit longer. And then we'll move toward Shavasana. And if you're comfortable in the if you in the supported fish, that, that's a great place for to stay for your Shavasana. Um, otherwise, come into the Shavasana position of your choice. And just be symmetrical and comfortable and using as little energy as possible. So supported either just by the mat or by whatever props you've chosen. And we're gonna take five minutes to let go, to let our bodies Put together all the things we've worked on, mostly the back bending and the open heartedness and the compassion that hopefully you've 
shown yourself a kindness and ju non-judgment during practice. Just being with what is, moment to moment, and if thoughts come, they will, so don't judge yourself for that. Just let them go. They're insubstantial, so just notice without judging, let them float on by. If you need an anchor, you can come back to your breath gently. gently bring your awareness back to this space back to your body back to your breath and begin to awaken your body slowly with small movements maybe a little stretching as you move toward drawing your knees into your chest and coming over onto your side body. Cradle your head in your arms and just take a few moments in side child's pose to assess at the end of practice, toward the end of practice, we're not done yet, but just Notice 
your physical body sensations, your emotional state, your mental state. Remember your intention. Hold on to it for a little longer. And use your arms to bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. We're going to um, end our practice today with a meditation, a loving kindness meditation uh, that ties into the idea of our practice today, open-heartedness, compassion, and a loving kindness meditation starts with sending positive thoughts and wishes to yourself and then branches out to everybody. And the idea is that compassion for others begins with kindness to ourselves. So here's how that this goes. So I'll, I'll explain it to you. So just make sure you're seated comfortably with a nice tall spine, eyes closed, your hands can be, one suggestion is palms facing up, cupped and palms facing up in your lap. That's just a mudra of receptivity. You don't have to do that. So any placement of your hands that you like is fine. So I've chosen a very basic um, loving kindness meditation just as a an example and if you do this on your own you can make the wishes be anything you want so here's the one we're going to do today and I, I'll I'll say the verse and you give you a little moment to repeat it in your own mind so it starts like this may I be kind to myself May I be well in mind, body, and spirit. May I be happy and at peace. Now the next round we're going to send out to others. And this can just mean uh, people that you don't know well. Uh, maybe the checkout person at the grocery store or your mail carrier or someone you saw on the street or just other people and the same wishes go to them so may others be kind to themselves may others be well in mind body and spirit May others be happy and at peace. The third round is perhaps the hardest, but this is the opening of compassion. So you choose someone or a group of people or anything that you have difficulty with. So someone that you might have a grudge against or has hurt you or you just don't get along with so this is a practice and so then you maybe imagine that person or people in your mind or name them and then send the wishes to them so may people that I have trouble with and you can substitute a name May people that I have difficulty with be kind to themselves. May people that I have difficulty with be well in mind, body, and spirit. May people that I have difficulty with be happy and at peace. And then the final round is to all beings everywhere. That means I think sentient beings, so I think of it as people, animals, maybe aliens, who knows? But it's all beings everywhere. So 
May all beings everywhere be kind to themselves. May all beings everywhere be well in mind, body, and spirit. May all beings everywhere be happy and at peace. Namaste. So loving kindness is a, a form of meditation that really can really helps with practice to opening yourself up. So be, but it always begins with yourself. And that that's a lesson that um, is, is important. So you really aren't going to be able to have compassion and kindness and love towards others if you don't have those things truly for yourself. So maybe you'll try that out at home sometime. You can, as I said, substitute any wishes, any groups. I always include my family and friends as a group. So have fun with it. All right. So may you be compassionate. <laughs> and I'll see you here next week, I hope. Bye.